As you can see, the horse that I'm going to be trimming in this video is quite lame. And we're not sure exactly where the lameness is coming from because he seems to for sure be lame on both fronts. But he's also short striding behind. So we're going to get his shoes off and take a look at his hooves and see if we can kind of pinpoint where that lameness is coming from. Oh, sore. Not really too sure why this horse is lame and about 90% of all injuries in horses occur from the knee down or the hock down and the hind legs. So one of the first places most of us tend to investigate are the hooves and sometimes it's hard to see what's going on while the shoes are still on and because this horse was not shod too long ago the owners um, were suspicious that this horse might have had a hot nail and a hot nail is a nail that has been positioned a little bit too close to live tissue uh, it doesn't quick them so you don't see pain when the nail goes in but I don't know five days to a week and a half later the horse will start to get uncomfortable and start to show signs of maybe having an abscess of something like that and the only way of of kind of relieving that pain is to remove the shoes and removing, you know, the nail that was causing all the discomfort in the first place. So unfortunately, we did not find anything that looked like a hot nail or an abscess on this day. This is um, a way that I personally like to remove clinches uh, when I'm removing shoes is I like to rasp them off. I find a lot of horses that are in a little bit of pain or discomfort, they really don't enjoy having those clinches nailed up or hammered up, sorry. Um, so I like to rasp them off. It's easier on me, it's easier on the horse, and usually the shoes come off quite easily afterward. And as you can see on these hinds, um, this horse had eight nails in each hoof, and this may just be a personal preference and my own personal opinion, but I don't usually like to see eight nails in each hoof. In order to do so, you usually have to nail past the widest part of the hoof, and some people will disagree with me on this, but I think that nailing past the widest part of the hoof uh, prevents proper expansion and contraction uh, in the hoof capsule, and that leads to contracted heels and long toes. But anyway, like I said, my personal opinion. Some horses really don't like it when you're moving hind shoes if you torque the joints too much. So sometimes I'll remove each nail individually, but these shoes came off pretty easily, so I just used my pull-offs to get the shoes off. Lots of horse shoes that aren't too worn. I just throw them away these days. I don't have much use for them. I used to save them, and I had a giant box full of them that I've never done anything with, so now I just toss them. If you have any cool projects that you like to do with old horseshoes, uh, leave me a comment and let me know what you do with them. Because I always feel bad, you know, it's such a useful product still. I hate throwing them away. Hold on. might be kind of hard to see on the video but this little area right here this lip that is not concavity that is what we call a retracted sole it shows up when the weather is wet so I'm trying to figure out why this horse is not very sound and I don't 100 well I don't really know why at all but I can't tell I don't think he was shot hot but sometimes the pressure of the shoe right there on that area of the toe can make them sore So that's one guess that I have. So when I bring a horse out of shoes, I don't do much trimming. I want to give them quite a bit of material, a little bit of extra material for protection and they can wear and chip it off as they please. This horse's wall is a bit like, uh, it's very soft, it's like rasping through butter. So I really just want to create a bevel on the hoof wall so that hopefully it doesn't chip too bad, especially where those nail holes are. I'm making the quarters a little bit more passive in the wall area. And he's got, he's got stretch lamina. I don't know if it's mechanical or if it's endocrinopathic. It's a fancy way of saying metabolic that bar down a little bit. 
kind of gross flaps of frogs off. Okay, and that's, oh, that heel's a little high. Can take a few swipes of that medial heel. It's a tiny bit higher than that lateral one. That's about it. I don't, I really don't want to change too much. I'm going to bevel from the top and that's it for that hoof. A little bit more adjusting because it looks like he's at a negative palmar angle. So I'm not going to touch his heels at, at all. Even if there's a tiny bit of imbalance, his heels need to grow. Take some of that frog. Very soft, all the structures. And I know the feet are wet, but even so, even just with the moisture, um, I think they'd be soft even if it was dry. So I am gonna take a decent amount of toe off because we still have kind of this cupping, but it's not as bad as the front. So if he does have thin soles, I don't think they're as thin as they are on his fronts. Toe down. And that wall, that wall is just gonna crumble. You can see where the nail holes were. He was nailing into the hoof wall, not close enough to the white line. So that will cause the wall to break and crumble. I'm assuming it's a he. I don't know who's done this horse before. And I don't want to say anything negative about other farriers. That's not the purpose of this. I think everybody's doing the best they can with the knowledge they have available. I'm just pointing out a few things that I'll, I'm going to try to change. Okay, that's about it. Just a light trim. I'm going to take more of that flaring a little bit from the top. You can see this, this wall on this side is much thicker than this wall. And that's because there's a big flare that starts about halfway down the foot hoof wall and kind of flies out laterally. bar down so it doesn't push on the wall right here it's kind of hard to see it we've got a crack in the heel that hopefully stops okay take a little bit of this off yeah just really soft like I'm barely I'm barely squeezing my nippers and it's just cutting through that like there's nothing there. You can see where the, the that nail hole is right in the middle of the hoof wall so it's just going to cause that wall to be brittle and crack. Some bruising in the toe. I think his feet are just gonna crumble without any shoes on because the hoof wall was already compromised from the nail holes and I know it could be could be a nutritional element as well I don't know lots of questions as to why this horse's hooves are the way they are as far as if it's environment nutrition genetics hoof care I don't know it takes me a while to form a pattern and to kind of start to see what's coming from where, like what's a symptom and what's an actual problem. And then start making some changes one at a time. On his foot away, uh, usually the foot that they have to wait next to them is the culprit, not the one you're picking up that they're struggling to hold up. It's the one that's standing with the full weight of the horse on it. So this front hoof is the same as the other front hoof. You can see there's cupping. That's not true concavity because it goes bowl, 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 and like, sorry, it goes flat, 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 and then it shoots straight up. True concavity will have a nice even bowl, bowl shape throughout the entire sole of the hoof. So 
I'm gonna be real careful about how much I take and I'm gonna leave a lot more on purpose than I normally would on like a horse that was just already barefoot. You can see that wall is just crumbling where that heel nail was. But I wanna make these quarters a little bit more passive. Otherwise they're gonna crack in the wall in that area quite badly. Hold on, bub. Take that bar a little bit. That bar. This frog looks pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it. So I don't, I'm inclined to think that it's his right front that's sore because that's the one he's pointing. But he seemed a little sore in both fronts when I was moving him around, when I was leading him out in the pasture. And I was doing tight turns with him to see if that caused any discomfort and it did both directions it seemed worse going to the left but he was also uncomfortable going to the right and now that he's pointing that right front it makes me kind of think that maybe that's the foot or the leg or the shoulder or whatever it is that might actually be bothering him oh you're all done i'm gonna take you back see there he goes points it again so just just all information to take in I can't fully diagnose anything and I'm certainly not a vet. That's not my place to do so. But just try to be mindful of the little details and sometimes I can add those little details together and they'll paint a big picture of what's wrong for a specific horse. So that's all that I'm trying to do. Hopefully find a recipe of hoof care and vet care and body work that will make this guy comfortable and sound again. So this horse's super awesome owner decided to take him to the vet to get some x-rays so that I could see what was going on inside the hoof capsule. Unfortunately, that revealed uh, that this horse has had some pedal osteitis of the coffin bone, which is demineralization of that outer edge of that bone. And unfortunately, that is not something that we can fix. Um, we can just make the horse as comfortable as we possibly can. And then in this other x-ray is the lateral view of the same hoof we can see that the horse only has three to four millimeters of sole depth. And in a healthy hoof, we would like to see 12 to 15 millimeters of sole depth. And then this line is showing that the coffin bone has had some rotation from most likely past laminitic episodes. So after seeing the x-rays, we decided that we need to give them this horse some serious protection to make him comfortable. So we decided to put him in a set of glue-ons. He's, he's feeding you. I know. 